Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the very first session of the MBA Stories series by Career Development Cell, IIT Madras, which is intended to provide insights to the students into the management journey and life at IIMs through sessions and conversations with alumni. My name is Malavika, and I'm a third year student at IIT Madras and coordinator of Career Development Cell, IIT Madras for the current academic year, and I'll be your host for the evening. Studying MBA has become extremely popular over the years, and now there are hundreds of MBA colleges all over India. IAMs, with its reputation tremendously built over the years, form the most committed institutes to pursue an MBA in India. Getting into IAMs is no cakewalk, and it is known for heavily demanding selection procedures, which filter out the best among the applicants from various disciplines across the spectrum. MBAs from IIMs open up many opportunities in the management sector to students from across the disciplines. Management has become a vital part of the organization structure of firms, and hence firms hire professionals with manage high managerial skills in high numbers. So reasons to pursue an MBA are many, to secure better positions within organizations, higher remuneration, or to gain knowledge to start one's entrepreneurial journey, to name a few. Keeping in mind the ever-growing importance of MBAs, today we have with us two of our alumni, Trishna Nair and Ashutosh Kumar Jha, who will be sharing their insights received from their experiences as management students at IIMs. To give a brief introduction to our speakers today, Trishna Nair is currently a PGP student at IIM Bangalore. After graduating from IIT Madras with a B.Tech in Chemical Engineering in 2018, Trishna worked with Vipro Consumer Care and Lightning as Senior Manufacturing Executive for over a year and worked as a consultant with MyPack Consulting Group for a short period before pursuing her MBA. And Ashutosh is currently pursuing his MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. After graduating from IIT Madras with a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering, Ashutosh worked with Goldman Sachs for over two years before pursuing his MBA. Thank you, Trishna and Ashutosh, for taking the time here with us today. We welcome you to the session. Thank you. We're happy to be. Thank you. Uh, to begin the session, I would request you to shed some light on your understanding of management and the role an MBA has help has in helping you make a career in the field of management. Uh, sure. Uh, do you want to direct it to one of us, or do you want both of us to like take this up? Uh, maybe Ashutosh can go on first and, and then sure. Trishna can follow up with it. Sure. Uh, so personally, the way I see an MBA is more of a long-term degree, right? As opposed to, say, a B.Tech or a master's. Uh, the way an MBA works is not in the short term, but in the long run. So uh, the way I see it, at some point, every job, uh, be it a technical job today as a software engineer, be, a, be it a banker, be it a, a quant in a bank or a even a consultant for that matter. At some point, like as a junior, you are always the grant uh, worker, right? In an organization. An MBA sort of helps you move up the ladder. Uh, so when you look at, uh, after a certain amount of point, what you'd have to do is you'd have to manage people at some level. And an MBA equips you with skills like that. Uh, so I would say an MBA is very, very helpful uh, in actually obtaining those skills. At least my classes over here, the way uh, the case method at IMA works, the uh, way you're supposed to, you know, learn from your peers more than your professors. In fact, that is encouraged over here. Things like that actually sort of build a certain mentality in you that is very helpful in corporate, corporate life. And having worked for two years, I will say that it definitely does help. Yep. Okay. And Trishna? Uh, yeah, just adding on to what Ashtar said. Um, so apart from that, I think it'll, like, it gives you exposure and like an understanding of all aspects of a business. So say when like whatever job you've taken up um, after your undergrad, so you're limited to one aspect of a business. Mine was, my viewpoint was limited to supply chain. So like, uh, so to get a better understanding of all aspects of a business, how everything works. So to get that big picture thing. So apart from what Ashtosh mentioned, MBA will certainly help with that. And there is of course the peer learning, the network, like, so, uh, so I'd say like in our, in IITs, uh, so there are most of the people have a very similar mindset. And uh, so uh, here we have people like who are CAs who have done a BA and all of that. So there's a lot more diverse thinking as well. So it helps in that way too. Okay, thank you. That was helpful. And now we'd like to hear your story uh, about what is it that motivated you guys to pursue an MBA? Like, especially since both of you are working with reputed firms before getting into IAMs, what kind of consideration did you have in mind, apart from the ones that you mentioned uh, along with the first question, uh, that led you to the path of an MBA? Uh, maybe Krishna can start with it. Sure. Uh, so the a major reason why I wanted to do an MBA was, of course, the exposure to all aspects of a business. So uh, like I mentioned, I'd been limited, so I'd worked in manufacturing. 
um so then i wanted to learn about all aspects of a supply chain so i worked for a supply chain consulting firm and so even there i felt i like was limited to supply chain so that is why to get exposure to all aspects of a business that was a major reason for an mba and of course this uh, like the this dig- like a degree from an iim is of course very reputed as well and i thought like at some point in my life i was going to have to do an mba so i felt like this was the right time to do it okay and ashutosh what are your voice views on the same uh, so my story is slightly more different uh, trishna i think is aware as well i did not plan to do management for a uh, like when i was an undergrad uh, i was more of a finance junkie uh, so i ended up uh, um at the same time i was also like pursuing research in like uh, very mathematical fields and uh, particularly computer science and i th- i thought that look uh, i would end up being a academic at some point in my life but uh, two years of work ex at goldman was very helpful in shaping my world view towards uh, what sort of work i really wanted to do uh, and the way i saw it i w- i really wanted to do more impactful work when i say impact it's more of like how many people am i actually impacting through a particular decision or a task that i do and uh, i saw that look mba actually tends to give me a m- much more stronger lever on that uh, similar sort of lines so uh, i decided that look an mba would if nothing at least it would be a nice two year networking event or that would be the worst case scenario and in the best case it would like propel my career by a lot so i mean it was a no brainer for me at that point okay uh, so uh, i'm curious about trishna did you have any aspirations mb aspirations as an undergrad uh, right when you started out in insti when did you feel that uh, yes i should pursue an mb so and in insti i was more like my minor was industrial engineering so what i actually considered just after even 2018 i gave my gre in the 20, in 2018 i'd considered a masters i was considering a masters in like say supply chain but i wasn't sure about that so and then mba was more like something that happened in 2019 so actually like when i switched jobs and like still in that form also i felt like uh, i didn't have the kind of learning and exposure that i really wanted uh, so i felt this would be a good springboard to get that kind of uh, exposure So yeah, I'd say about 2019. Uh, like after my after working for some time, that was when I realized that MBA would be helpful. And just Ashutosh, mm-hmm. I think he had some admits also for some PhD programs and all. So his was a very, I think, a, a like decision that he took pretty late, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I was delaying the decision by quite a lot. So, but yeah, I I would add to like what Krishna was saying. Like I said, I mean. when you're working right uh, as a as both of us went from experience and something that krishna said resonated a lot you tend to get siloed in your particular function uh, for me i was on the market side of things and i was looking at uh, i mean mark, uh, daily market movements all day long and that had sort of siloed me to what other aspects of business existed and i think an mba or for that matter like a good b school right gives you a very good chance to take a step back think about look there is mo- a lot more to business than just what you have been doing in your job and i think that is a very valuable insight in general so yeah okay thank you uh, and so now that you guys are in in uh, iams and you have gone through the selection process we'd like to get to know from you guys about the different selection processes that are required to get into iams uh, you know uh, the cat examination and interview uh maybe i think ashutosh can start with his uh, your experience here on attempting cat sure uh so uh cat as a whole uh, i wrote the cat three times uh i do not know about krishna but i had to write it three times before i actually cleared it uh i wrote the first time in 2018 when i was an undergrad uh the second time in 2019 uh sorry 2017 18 and 19 these are the three versions that i wrote uh so yeah uh, so you have the the standard pr- process of getting into iima uh, or uh, any of the iims would be that you would write cat uh, you would get a percentile uh, and you would have sectional percentiles as well you would have to clear cutoffs in each of the sectional percentiles and then you would uh, and based on the percentile that you get overall percentile that you get you would get calls from certain iims all right uh, the call process is in itself a slightly complicated one each iim follows a very different uh, process but broadly there is weightage given to uh, your cat percentile uh, which is i think about 40% of the weightage in uh, getting a call 
and then uh, there are other aspects to it as well like the amount of work experience you have had so there are slabs for example some iims use some iims have a very standard rating system on the number of months you have worked but uh, the i mean you you would have to look up for every iim separately so you would have this work experience points you would have points for diversity for example if you are a btech uh, you would uh, get slightly lesser points as opposed to certain other people who are minority in the application process right so you would get points for say you say you are a chartered accountant not a lot of chartered accountants actually apply to uh, iim so because of that uh, your points would slightly go down uh, and this would matter a lot to every insti guy out there a uh, girl or guy out there this would be a problem and finally uh, i think there is a certain amount of points given to maintain gender diversity in the batch so i believe these are the four broad points that actually add on to your entire this thing uh, some iims have extra points for uh, for the amount of certifications that you have for example if you have done a cfa i think cozy core or lucknow one of them actually have points for something like that uh, as far as i am aware ab or c does not have it but yeah uh, this is broadly the so you would basically get points in each of these verticals your points would be added across uh, this uh, set of different criteria that you have and a rank list would be prepared based on which you would get a call once you have a call then there's an interview process uh, where you know you go there the bunch of profs will interview you on different things and then there's like the admit that you get at the end of it okay um so could you also please shed some light on your personal story your personal preparation journey about how you uh, prepared during the course of your uh, work because you were also working how did you manage right. everything in a go right uh so as far as cat prep as well uh, itself goes it's not very as as far as subject matter is concerned it's just 10 standard uh level math uh, and uh, verbal ability that you have to actually think of logical reasoning is again from something like an ntsc that an a standard guy would have written it's nothing harder than that but uh, i would say that my personal strategy for cat evolved over the three times that i actually wrote the cat the first time i basically went in unprepared uh it was a very uh, bad experience because of that uh and the second time i actually gave a gave a little bit of fight into it uh i would say that you would have to look at look cat has three sections you have your logical reasoning uh, data interpretation you have your quantitative uh, aptitude and you have the uh, verbal ability section that you uh, and to me uh, the hardest section that seemed at the time was dilr i the trick was that look uh, cat is not a game of accuracy it's a game of speed uh, so if you can solve a lot more questions uh, or if you you don't have to attempt everything to do well even if you attempt a very short amount of uh, questions right for example dilr at least in my batch i think it has reduced the number of questions has reduced now uh, cat in dilr particularly in my batch used to have 32 questions in eight sets so uh, i i was doing really bad simply because i was trying to attempt all the eight sets at once and that isn't the way you're supposed to write cat I, when you write uh dilr you're supposed to start by picking look i will attempt these three or four sets today if i if i if, if like uh, my luck is good today i'm going to go for my fifth set that is the way you're supposed to attempt it and that sort of reduces the pressure on you so i would say that cat is much more of a mind game quant is still i would say again like it's a you'll have to pick the easy questions very quickly the kind that you would, as an engineer for example you would be able to just look at it and answer it something like that is far more but you are far more better of answering questions like that than actually getting caught up in a hard question because you will like i said you someone who is like managing time much more effectively will make more points than you uh, verbal ability generally i have not seen people actually struggle with time per se but uh, verbal ability can get confusing from time to time uh, my strategy around verbal ability was mostly through the gre prep that i had done uh, and through reading a lot uh, and obviously you i would i would say the best thing that you can do about cat right as a exam is just sit and write mocks like sit and write around 40 50 mocks and you are you will have a certain grip on the exam as a whole so apart from that obviously there are books standard books like arun sharma for uh, pond uh, and i used rs agarwal for uh, dilr and if you sit and you know you don't have to solve the entire book cover to cover but you could you know use them as very good reference materials while attempting the cat uh, i remember in my final year a bunch of us had taken cat coaching from time as well but uh, i mean it depends if you need classroom coaching or not uh, i would say 
for some people it's very helpful some for some it's not it depends on how much hand holding you need uh, in the preparation stage okay so uh, while you were working did uh, did you have coaching or did you prepare completely on your own when i was working i had to prepare completely on my own uh, i had taken uh, uh, the aim cards and uh, sim cards from uh, time and uh, ims respectively uh, so i had their online mock papers available to me i had my time material from my undergrad that i had kept so i i did have the material to prep but i did not have a classroom program like i said uh, mm-hmm. towards the so i did attend the classroom program in my final year but uh, during the final time when i was attempting cat and which was the only successful attempt i had uh, i actually had to uh, study on my own i would say that mock test helped a lot i had not looked at that part of prep for quite some time okay. yeah. Sure. And Trishna, how was your experience clearing through CAD? Um, so mine was quite different. Actually, I hadn't planned on like so. I had planned for an MBA in twenty one. So joining an MBA, so I had an admit from ISB through their early entry option. And uh, so I and I was thought I'd prepare for CAD the next year and write it. So I just prepared for like two three weeks in June when I was searching for a job. So I I wanted to have both options. So I pretty much just went like that that to CAD and. I guess it was like Ashutosh said; it's a mind game also. So I was like completely stress-free and all of that. So that probably helped, and that's what. So that's why I'm not sure I can help much with CAT prep. So then I prepared for the interview. I put in a lot of effort because I didn't want to let that opportunity go waste, of course. So I think I could. I'd be better equipped to answer that. Yes. Uh, so maybe you can start with your experience during the interviews and how did you prepare for it the strategies that you adopted the ones that you worked out and which you feel that could have been improved yeah sure i uh, was just one thing i think like reading a lot will help with cat like so i'm an avid reader so i've been reading since childhood so i think that helped a bit so like especially the verbal section as well as like going through the so if you can read quickly through the other questions as well that will also help i think uh, this my that was one pointer i had Uh, so about the interviews, so there are a bunch of top. Uh, so do you want me to talk about my experience first, or how I prepare for it? Uh, maybe you can talk about your experience first, and uh, about how you went about it after that. Sure. So I I wasn't uh, like planning to write CAT, so I only put in A B C, and I got calls from Bangalore and Calcutta, and I converted both. Uh, so Bangalore uh, in my interview was mainly centered around my work experience, uh, which was in supply chain. Uh, so they asked me about what supply chain was, a few supply chain concepts, uh, then uh, what uh, the projects that I'd done at work, uh, then some of some of my extracurricular activities. I'd done a bit of work with Change. dot org, and so so they asked me a bit about that. Then my hobby. So like I said, I'm, I mentioned I'm an avid reader. So they asked me a bit about the books I was reading, and so I talked to them about uh, like the book I was reading currently, what I'd learned from it, the kind of insights I had, why I really liked it, and all of that. uh there was just one current affairs question about something about the oil prices don't quite remember it so this was my bangalore experience this lasted about 25 minutes so and then calcutta so they asked me again about supply chain so supply ch- the, like questions like which companies do you think have good supply chain such as zara amazon and uh, i think two three other supply chain questions which i answered um then they picked up my transcript and asked me chemical engineering questions So what had happened is for Calcutta, there's a lot of math. Uh, so supposedly they ask a lot of math and quant questions. So I've been preparing for that, and I sort of skipped skipped chemical engineering. So I couldn't answer a single chemical engineering question. But so how I, I essentially said that I've been working in supply chain. You can ask me about supply chain. Chemical engineering is not something I'm I really remember. And uh, so then then they uh, like taking this humanities elective in second year, they ask you about that. So I couldn't answer that either. And uh, so and then what they didn't ask me any math, and yeah, I think that was pretty much it. I don't remember anything else. But I think I think it's also a matter of the kind of confidence you show. So I'd confidently said like, see, I've been working in supply chain. My minor was industrial engineering, so I was interested in this. And so you can ask me anything about this. So that is a fe- uh, that is a field that I don't remember much about. Even humanities, the humanities elective was in second year. So I think they were like convinced by my knowledge of supply chain and all of my work. and the kind of uh, confidence i portrayed so uh, uh, this also lasted i think about half hour and this was online so bangalore had been in person and then covid started so my calcutta interview was online uh, so yeah that was pretty much it about my experience and i converted both so i guess th- they went finally uh, so just about my sorry go ahead yeah now maybe you can talk about your preparation strategy 
Yeah, sure. So there's a bunch of like so I'll just talk about uh, just mention the buckets that I'm going to talk about. So one is like current affairs in general knowledge. Uh, then there's like your domain knowledge. So this is especially important for people with workex. Uh, so then there's an, like uh, so these are my buckets. So there's like resume questions. Uh, there's HR and behavioral questions and like um, MBA specific questions. Uh, so starting with my current affairs or general knowledge. So I wasn't quite sure what all I needed to prepare for this. So I joined Career Launchers uh, this interview prep something. Uh, inter I think interview prep only. So this was online. Ha, they had a bad PI preparation. My bad. Uh, so they had really good resources. There was a bunch. There were a bunch of videos talking about, like, say, topics like GST, demonetization, and all of that. So all of the topics that needed to be covered. So there was. So and apart from that, I read newspapers. So I think it's important to read at least one newspaper thoroughly, in the, at, like for at least one to one and a half months before your interview. So I read the Economic Times thoroughly, and then I read the editorial pages of like a bunch of newspapers, like the Times of India, the Hindu, the Mint. All of this. Uh, so th why did this was? It's just, like uh, it's very important to have an opinion of your own. So as a manager, as future managers, you'll be exposed to a lot of information. You'll have to take decisions. Let's say sixty to seventy percent of just of the information required available. So being able to like just pick up all of the information, like get uh, take the important points from those and develop an opinion or take a decision essentially. That is very important. So that is why these editorial pages, like reading the editorial content, was very helpful in developing an opinion. So let's say if I were um, reading one newspaper, one was a uh, inclined a certain way, another was inclined another way. So I'd be exposed to all viewpoints and like the plus most of these editorials back there or whatever they were saying with data. So that also helped. And uh, so uh, plus uh, let's ensure that any opinions that I had weren't superficial, because the interviewers like they're going to be professors with like a lot of years of experience and all of that. They and they'll have interviewed multiple candidates, so they'll easily get to know if you're sort of faking your knowledge. So that so that was about my current affairs general knowledge thing. The next bucket was domain knowledge. Uh, so my domain was supply chain. Uh, so I'd uh, I'd done a bunch of online courses apart from the my minor and also. So I just like try to revise, brush up on those courses and um, keep up with the latest developments in my field. Through like um, there are a bunch of sites called like, like supply chain dive etc. So keep up with those. Uh, then were CV questions. So this was um, so whatever uh, or any of your resume or whatever, you need to be thorough with all of the. Uh, so I think Bangalore has an SOP. I think somebody else had a resume. I don't quite remember. Uh, so whatever you're submitting, you need to be thorough with everything that you've written in that. So they can just pick up any point in it and they can keep probing. And if they sense that you're even the least bit uncomfortable in that, so they will want to probe even more. So whatever you've done, like say any project that I've done, so since I've actually done it. And so I should be ready to like uh, talk about it in detail and ready to answer any question because I'm supposed to have actually done it, right? So, uh, so being like, so what uh, what people can do is like any project that you've done or anything that you mentioned, like in your resume or SOP, um, just try to go over all of that mentally. I I write everything down. So I have a Word doc where I write everything down. So they can do one of those. So that so this also helps apart from the fact that it helps refresh your memory. So it also helps that you know what uh, what are the most important points. So you can mention those at first. Because uh, interviewers do tend to cut you off when you're answering, so in the first 30 seconds are very important for any answer. Uh, then there was like HR and behavioral questions. So this this is like tell me about yourself, which is very important. Um, then stuff like strengths and weaknesses, short term, long term goals, and all of that. I just uh, Google like a bunch of HR questions. Um, then there is behavioral questions as well. So the behavioral questions is more like there's a like usually situational questions. Like so they'll tell like give me an instance when it showed some say this trait. Or um, say you're in this situation, what will you do? Stuff like that. So you can, you can look those up as well. Um, yeah, and tell me about yourself is also very important because it helps you set the tone for the rest of your interview. So I think I spent out of these 25 minutes, I spent at least five to seven minutes talking about reading. So it helps you direct the interviewer in a certain direction towards your strengths, essentially. Um, then like M MBA questions, so which is sort of a subset of these HR questions. So they'll ask you like questions like why MBA and you have to be very clear. So I mean, you have to have your story ready like, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened. This is how I'm here. And like by that specific college as well. So for that, they can just take a look at the college website and like say the various clubs and bodies and all of that. And also this will also help in the, like say at the end of the interview, the interviewer asks if you have any questions for them. So based on that research, you can, um, like you can formulate some question um, to ask them. Uh, then I think VAT, I'm not quite sure VAT is there this year. I think it is there for Bangalore. Um, so in any in any way, so if, for VAT, 
um for content i just relied on my general knowledge preparation and uh, then i practiced writing a bunch of these so for that another thing that's important is um like the time sticking to the time limit the word limit and structuring it so structuring was just like an intro paragraph um then the body about two paragraphs and then a conclusion and i think i also used to do is like the conclusion i try to mention it in the intro paragraph also see this is what i'm going to do then i'm proving it and then i'm concluding with that again um something like that and uh, so and also just one or two pointers uh, so it's completely okay to say that you don't know the answer so uh, clearly the, i am calculated i had a lot of that to say um then also it's okay to take a minute to think so uh, basic especially if it's something that you haven't really thought about before will help like i think two or three times doing this should be fine so just take a minute to structure your answer and ensure that it's well thought out so otherwise if you say give a superficial answer and then they probe you and then you find that you don't know enough or you haven't structured your answers so if you're just thinking on your feet even that will be shown so if like it's completely okay to ask for a minute to think um before you answer so this was pretty much it if there's anything else specific you want to know do tell me sure thank you trishna and ashutosh i would like to know from you about how your experience was at iim uh, ahmedabad was it were there something different from what trishna had experienced right uh, so i had uh, five interviews to give uh, i had applied to abc l and k uh, i would say each of my interviews i would say that a b and c all have their very unique style of interviewing uh, l and k have a very different style of interviewing people uh, so again i did not prep as much for interview as trishna did uh, my interview was more of my interview prep was more of i'll just go ahead and wing it uh, but uh, i would say that a lot of what trishna was saying was resonated with me for me for example i did not have to separately start picking up on news because uh, as a guy who worked on the market so uh, i had to be up to date on news every uh, every uh, morning right uh, and the uh, news part was covered because of that you have two parts to your pi right you have I, one you have is your vat one you have is your pi uh, again i'm also not sure of whether vat is there this year or not but look what the across the five ims what i saw they were looking for was that even if you do not know a lot it's okay it's okay it's completely fine if you do not know a lot what is more important is what you know you know really really well uh, i'll give an example like for example uh, in my amdavad interview and this is again not to take that you know do this and this is how you will make it through amdavad i mean um, towards the end of the interview right like uh, the prof was interviewing me asked me hey uh, you know we have heard enough about your work ex we have heard enough about your views why don't you tell me something that you do for fun i told him i enjoyed podcasts and reading uh, he told me okay uh, tell me the first book you uh, for uh, is what what is your favorite series of all time and i told him harry potter was like one of my favorite he was like are you a pot are you a complete potter head junkie i was like yes i am and he went into we we started basically quizzing each other on harry potter and at a point he literally asked me hey can you name the irish british team and this is very very obscure i don't there are very few people who actually like memorize details to this level i told him look i will be able to do any question you give him give me at the very start of the quiz so their intent and again had i lied at something like this right it would have been very obvious so do not lie or do not take some time to think take some time to think if you get stuck at some point it's very okay to you know say hey i am not very sure of the answer but i can try to work it out uh, so that is always there that option is always there to you and do not lie at any point do not lie just it's completely fine just say i do not uh, i mean can we move on to something else? in fact they'll ask you why don't you tell me something you want me to ask you on like they asked me about mechanical engineering and i told them very upfront that look my grades might show something else i am a very different person i have zero clue about like it has been 2 years i have been working in like markets i cannot do anything with uh, mechanical engineering at this point so to folks who are like writing out of like final year please be very thorough with the subject they will ask you that to folks who are like going in with a little bit of work they will probe you on your work ex uh yeah uh, i mean there might be a stress interview calcutta was a stress interview for me uh they straight up uh, at some point the interviewer straight up told me hey man i i can see very clearly that you only want mo more money in your life that is why you are like coming to i am calcutta and and you have to be very clear you know at, when someone says something that rudely to you right and you're supposed to maintain a calm composure and say that look uh, sir you might feel what whatever you might feel but i can only tell you like what is my view on this entire thing 
and you need to be very polite as well. They are your interviews. You can't uh, suddenly jump the gun on them. So yeah, uh, keep in mind that interviews are of different flavor. Bangalore, on the other hand, was hands down the most friendly interview I've ever like attended. Uh, it, the profs were really nice. They they you know they were generally interested in my work. They I was slightly more interested in their work as well, and it it helped. It helped a lot. Uh, and Ahmedabad was again like a mix. Some places it was a stress interview. Like I said, towards the end it became a Harry Potter uh, quiz. I, I was, it was a very uh, roller coaster sort of an interview. So be prepared for anything. Uh, be very clear on your YMBA question. It will come up in every of the each one of your interviews that you'll go to. YMBA will come up. Uh, and just be very very clear. For me, it was uh, I just told them the truth. I told them, look, I wanted to be an academic. Clearly, that plan isn't working out anymore. Uh, and uh, the next best thing I can do is I'm in a corporate job. I would like to pr propel my co corporate job further. Uh, I am in finance. MBA is like very closely related to finance. I I therefore want to do an MBA. I just structured it this way. It, like everything led to everything. So be a very clear, concise person in uh, answering those questions. Have a truthful response. Don't look it up and try to memorize something off the web. You will, uh, I mean, they will see through it. They have been doing this for years now. And they're one of, like, I can tell you some of the pros were like one of the smartest people. My interview was one of the smartest people I had met. So I would still say that do not lie to them and just stick to your strengths. I mean, you can, you can very well tell them, look, I do not know anything about mechanical learning. I told them I love math. So give me anything with math. By the way, Calcutta, I told the exact same thing. He gave me a question. I could not solve it. Uh, and then he laughed at my face. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, he's like, you loved math. What happened now? <laughs> so again, uh, you need to be prepared for that happening as well. But it's okay. Even if you mess up, it's completely okay. Uh, just maintain a calm, cool composure over there. Okay, sure. That was very descriptive. Uh, so also, did you uh, have any preparation strategy which included talking to alums who have already uh, been through the process? So while before moving into the interview stage, did you get seek help from external sources so that you could hone your skills better and tackle the interview process better? Uh, I can go ahead with this one. So uh, honestly, my like I said, my interview prep wasn't very well formed. Trishna will probably have a different view on this. I just went through, there was a question on Quora regarding like, what is uh, what were the questions asked to you in your IM interview? And I just went through that thread. Apart from that, honestly, I did not reach out to any other alum per se. I just went through that thread, which consisted of, of a lot of IM alums. But yeah, I think that thread is very helpful. Okay, Trishna, your views on the same? Uh, yeah, I had a few friends who were here already at IIM Bangalore. So one of them is a just graduated this year. Another of them is a second year here. So I reached out to them, like to people I knew personally. So uh, for any like for what I should do, any guidance, any tips, and all of that. So uh, I reached out to two, three of them. And apart, yes, as Ashutosh mentioned, I did look up on uh, like resources online for uh, how to prepare for interviews and all of that. By the way, I think uh, I'll add on to that. Um, I did reach out to a few alums, not for interview prep, but I was more on the deciding of whether I should join IIM or not. That helped me form my YMBA question very clearly. If possible, reach out to your seniors at IIMs or people who have graduated from IIM and ask them what, say you, you have something in mind about why you want to do an MBA, ask them, will that purpose get fulfilled over there? Will, uh, will there be something else that I have to worry about? For example, a lot of people, very clearly upfront told me that, look, if you want to do finance at IIM, you need to be like chartered accountants are very heavily preferred. So uh, I had this knowledge going in. So if I said that I wanted to do finance and a prof asked me, but you're not a CA, what about that? Then I had some data to back it up. I I asked my friends, they told me that engineers with FinWorkX would get into banks. So I, I had that data to back me up. So it helps you form a much more clearer picture of what IIM is, what kind of... Uh, what what is your goal alignment that you can achieve out of IIM? I think that is helpful if you do want to talk to your seniors or friends at IIM. Yeah, adding on to that, I'd actually sorry, uh, sorry, I cut you off. So I'd actually I was I was confused whether I should do an MBA in India or abroad. So I'd reached out to a bunch of alums who'd say work like in CRD, HCC Paris, or LBS and all of that. So I was mainly considering schools in Europe. So I'd reach out to them. So like Ashutosh mentioned, in the decision-making process, talking to them can be very helpful. Somebody who's been through the same experience. So what kind of things they considered for their decision and like whether it actually worked out. So what I have in mind is like, is the picture I have in mind accurate and all of that. So, and even like for supply chain, I'd reached out to a bunch of alumni. So certainly for any decision-making process or any knowledge gathering thing, 
alumni are certainly very helpful. Okay, uh, so Trishna, you mentioned you also considered uh, B schools abroad. So, what made you choose MIMs over B schools abroad? What are the specific parameters that you looked into, and what were the major points that you found striking in IIMs that set them apart from B schools abroad? Sure. Uh, so, one major thing was I wanted to settle in India. So, I'm very happy here. My family is here. And uh, so I'm, I'm like, I don't see like a significant, I don't see a significant benefit to moving abroad, but still I was considering it because of course they're like world-class B schools and all of that. Uh, so the factors, so one thing was, of course, I would have to have a lot more work experience. So especially schools in Europe need even more work experience than you, the US, like six to seven, like in the, you can uh, manage with like three to four years of work experience in the US, the school in the US. Um, second was uh, this the the kind of pay. So of course uh, this I, like if it, the fees would be a lot a uh, lot higher than what uh, any the fees of any school in India. So I would have to stay back there to like essentially repay the fees. And then there would be the fact that okay, so there would possibly be even a language barrier for say schools like NCR or HCC. So I think the major factor was I didn't see a like real ROI for an MBA abroad because I wanted to settle in India. I think if you're okay with settling abroad, that is still something you can consider. But I felt like I am Bangalore or even I ISB. So I had an admit from ISB as well. So I think those served like what I was looking for the knowledge and like um like I say getting more exposure and all of that. I think thought that so uh, those served my purpose. Okay, thank you, Trishna. Ashutosh, did you also have considerations about uh, pursuing an MBA abroad? Like I, did, I did, I did, uh, and it's something that was very natural to any industry student who went through the grind. All you would see all these seniors who, you know, went to either McKay or Goldman or uh, HLITC or I mean the day one companies, and you know, go ahead and uh, go ahead uh, work for two years, do something else for two years, and do a HSW sort of a path. This is the traditional business path that industry propagates. Uh, I would say that uh, there are other alternatives to it. Like Krishna said, there is al always the consideration of where you want to settle down. Uh, there is an article by Avril Bhatnagar on why he is long India, uh, which is a very good read on the same. There is an article by Hemant Mohapatra, who is like a partner at Lightspeed Ventures, who writes about, you should think about where you want to die instead of where you want to live. Uh, that is also a very important consideration to have. I mean, uh, and there are always like these considerations of where do you actually want to like see where do you see yourself in the next few years? Uh, for me, that was not as clear as Krishna's was. I was still very much uh, aligned. I did want to you know run a business at some point, even as an uh, even with a PhD, I would probably look at a CTO sort of a role. Uh, but I I that sort of made it slightly more clear that look I might have to like move back to India simply because running a business is far more easier as a citizen here and. Uh, Separately for the fact that India as a whole is like a very quickly growing economy at this point. Uh, it's almost impossible to ignore the, if you want to run a consumer based business or a, a SaaS based business, I think India hands down is probably the best uh, country to actually run such a business. In. Uh, so that was always a consideration that I was looking at. Uh, separately, again, uh, every point made by Trishna is valid. The, the ROI funder that look, I'll have to pay so much money. I would have to like stay outside to pay off the loan. That was okay. Uh, for me, I was willing to give that three years extra in, say, a city like New York. Uh, but uh, the whole fund was that look, uh, even even if I really just want the exposure, right? The biggest uh, sell of a, a, a B school abroad was that you would get to interact with all these people from different countries uh, and different work experiences. The idea was that look, uh, you could if you really in if you are that hell bent upon say going to HEC or uh booth or someplace like that right i am so offer i offer an exchange program and a dual degree program if you really wanted that exposure in your b school you could get, very well get them through iams as well uh in fact you would have the best of both worlds you would actually get some time in uh india you would actually you would have to spend another year in say hec that i think i think both a and b offer that uh you could uh, go to bokani there's like booth which has like a semester exchange program with iams yale has one with i am bangalore i am aware uh, and so there are like different exchange programs that you could take up at IIM as well, which would serve that purpose. Uh, so overall, it was like a mix of everything. Again, both paths are very valid. Uh, if you want to go ahead and do a B school, uh, get a B school uh, experience abroad, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I mean, I just chose this one uh, instead of that. Instead of that, I mean, it's a very apples to oranges comparison, I would say.
think about i mean to me the driving decision is think about where do you see the next 5 years uh, of your life i mean do not even think 40 50 and all like just see next 5 years where do i want to spend uh, like cool i'll spend next 5 years in india if i really want to move abroad i'll get another degree or like uh, if i uh, i could just pivot from inside a uh, uh, corporate job but next 5 years i saw myself in india so i was like cool I, this will work out for me Thank you, Shudesh. That was really helpful. Uh, and now uh, we would like to get a peek into the life at IIMs. So one year into IIM life, uh, we would like to know from you guys about your uh, comments on the academic life. So maybe we can uh, start with Trishna about how IIM Bangalore is and what your experience has been so far. It's very very hectic. So that is certainly there. Like so, we have um, like we have three terms a year, which is like crunched into ten weeks for us. It was nine weeks because our term started in August because of COVID, and so and plus uh, so our term one and two were online. So now I'm on campus, thankfully. Uh, so it's it's certainly very hectic, but it, and it's very intense. But then so at the same point, so that just helps you form like stronger bonds, or that helps you develop skills like. So, INSEE certainly helped with time management, but the thing was, the term was stretched over four months. So you had enough time to just do everything. So here, so all of that time management, that so it, it, and plus the first two terms get very stressful because of our summer placements as well. So we have this resume where, like, you're making the resume, like getting it verified. So they, we need proofs for each and every point. So, like, say if I'm saying my this is my school, um, like this is my rank in school, and my school principal needs to verify that. So that that verification and all of that, so that and then of course preparation for summer placements. So and apart and managing that with like academics and all of that was certainly very hectic. So now it's a lot more. It's at least comparatively calmer. So now it's just academics and any any club activities that you have. So there are a bunch of great clubs here as well. Um and uh, so yeah, anything else that you want to take up. So the and plus the thing is here, I feel like there's a lot more di like I just mentioned earlier. So there's a lot more diversity. So you you see, I mean, I'm astounded by the way some of these people think. So you, that kind of a peer learning, which Ashutosh also mentioned, and all of that, it's a, it's it's, re, it's a really great experience. So that's about it. Yes. Yeah, so you also mentioned about clubs and uh, other activities. So I would like to know from you about how conducive is the environment at IIMs to pursue your passions and hobbies. Uh, sure. I'll just go ahead. Uh, so it's it's certainly very conducive. Like people just so I'm in a club called Forum for Industrial Interaction. So this is what I was interested in. There's a, a club called Vikasna for social work. Um, there's a um, dance club, Tal. There's a music, Dhwani, a music club, and all of that. So there's a wide range of clubs, and so people take up. Are, people are actually parts of multiple clubs and societies. There's the festivals and all of that. So this, um, like this extracurricular, so to say, culture is as like is is certainly very thriving here, and it's it's not that difficult to uh, like uh, manage actually. If uh, if uh, uh, some activity that you're interested in, I mean. Okay. Also, could you please explain about uh, how the summer placements uh, work and the processes associated that you had to go through? Sure. Uh, I think uh, uh, I can also like talk about uh, like life at IMA separately. Uh, Trishna has given a very good view of IMB. Uh, yes. A is slightly more hectic, I think, that is uh, known across all the campuses. Uh, that I mean, the he hectic part of A actually does not come from the fact that it you know does something special or anything. It follows what is called the case method of teaching uh, across all the subjects. I think B and C have the case method as well, but it's not across every subject that is there. So uh, a case method of learning. Uh, there were very few classes. I have taken two classes in INSTE which actually propagated this sort of pedagogy. Uh, the idea is that a prof is not there to teach uh, in a classroom, all right? He is there to facilitate a discussion. He is just an instructor. Uh, he is not a professor over there. He is an instructor who will just who will be like a you know the uh, guy who actually runs the orchestra. He is just moving his hands and uh, the orchestra plays. Uh, a prof in IMA is very much like that. Uh, there is no teaching that happens. What the learning happens through what is called cases, uh, where cases are basically real life business opportunity, business examples. For example, we did a this morning. I did a case on PNG, right? Uh, where Colgate had actually come up with a, a new brand of toothpaste, and uh, PNG was uh, trying to like compete against it. Uh, and this was on first mover advantage, and this was a class on strategy. And we were the way we had to learn was we all went through the case before coming to class. 
we all had formed opinions and the class was more of a discussion we were like hey look because business business more often than not uh, to anyone in institute uh, is very very different from the classes you take in institute in institute the, the questions are very clear you know if you have x plus 1 is equal to 4 x will be equal to 3 uh, it's a very clear answer sort of thing business is much more open ended as a result of which it requires much more deeper discussions as well so uh, case method basically forces you to get into that sort of learning so the hecticness of amdavad at least comes from the fact that you have say three classes every day you have to read three cases which would consume three hours of your time at the very least before coming to class and then you would have four and a half hours of classes then you would have you know clubs to take care of you had summer placements uh, i mean life would basically get uh, so i would not say nothing nothing that was being taught was hard as opposed to insti where i went through classes graduate level classes which were just hard even if you give 4 hours of your time you would not understand anything out of say an analog circuits course uh, as opposed to that classes here are easier but they they demand daily attention so there is like a daily uh, time commitment that is required which makes life a little more hectic here uh, again it was a fun ride for me i was uh, it was online like krishna said we were in like covid and uh, things had become slightly more murky because of that uh, classes started online i moved after term 1 uh, and term 2 and term 3 i did uh, from uh, the campus here in fact my summer placements happened out of uh, campus as well. like they were still online but i was in campus when i was like uh, doing my summer prep so it does help being on campus i will not lie uh, the camaraderie there were i would say 100% that like the batch is much more close knit uh, than uh, iit was iit was a a bigger batch b everyone did different things right like people in neva could not relate to people in metallurgy on the other hand here when everyone has a deadline at the same day and like the, the ta throws like another assignment just two hours before the close of the deadline i mean everyone will crib together so everyone just gets together far better uh, but yeah there is a bunch of activities to do uh, i would say that the cultural scene is definitely not as thriving as madras was uh, i mean cultural scene at amdavad is uh, i would say it's good it's definitely really good but it's not as thriving as madras so sports scenes are like far better over here uh, i would i would see people randomly going out playing frisbee in the lawn uh, whenever i wanted to library is far 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 better profs are a class apart i mean uh, i think management profs are just way too good so yeah life at ima is like fun it's hectic but it gets better after the first year at least that's what they tell me <laughs> yeah okay. again like clubs are much more career focused so i would not get into that but life is fun there is a lot more close knit culture here okay so initially when the classes were conducted in an online mode uh, how would you compare it with uh, the later on sessions in the offline uh, classroom mode for us it is still online it's just that we are in the hostels and we are attending it i'm not sure about krishna uh, she can probably okay. so it's still online for us some of these um, like second year students are having classes in person so i can't shed light on that sorry i mean at least case discussions happen normally i i have not seen something very uh, haphazard happening so far there is obviously a lot of talking over but it's okay i mean apart from that that happens in real life as well so yeah i think it's more or less good okay Uh, and then uh, now maybe we can get back to our question on the summer placements and uh, the how it is carried out and the kind of preparations that you guys put in. Ah, uh, sure. So I was preparing for consulting, so I can shed light in that. I think Ashutosh, um, like, can shed light in finance. So, uh, so my prep was so initially first there was of course the resume phase. So wherein you had to like um put all your points together, get all those points, whatever you wanted to mention. So uh, this was like it actually getting these points together was like in steep placements. Just go through all of that you've been uh, like all of the work that you've done, all of your achievements and all of that. Just have a mass like form a master resume to begin with. And uh, so once all of those points were written, so then you could uh, then we'd start going to seniors. So see like to help uh, to essentially help improve and refine those points. so and once that was also done so then there was the resume verification process where everything was verified so like my uh, um, like i think for my percentage and all of that my so the 10th 12th certificate and all of that would do btech degree of course uh, then any all of the college related points i needed to approach profs at insti uh, so who would approve that for work i had to reach out to all of my managers 
and for awards and achievements all of these certificates were required or if it was i didn't have anything i'd had to reach out to the organization on their um, like official email and they would um essentially like just mention approved in that emails to and this was to uh, uh, ensure the veracity of that point so this so this uh, brazilian verification was a bit tedious but so and i think this was we actually started a lot later than ea i think they were done by august end so ours went on till mid october so um, then there was of course the preparation for summer so this was consulting prep so which was essentially case prep so just like uh, so each iim or most b schools actually have their own case books so that involves essentially the interview experiences of the previous year students like so they uh, come out with a case book each year so what kind of cases they had and like the whole uh, uh, essentially the uh, the whole case is mentioned in the book so we so a, i think i am uh, amdabar has the best case book so most of us would do that so just essentially so we'd form uh, say groups of three people so my case group had three people and uh, so each of us would like so one person would be the interviewer one would be the interviewee who would be solving the case and one would be an observer and uh, so yeah i did a bunch of cases like that and so that and then to, uh, like closer towards summers i also looked at my resume and the hr questions and all of that in case any of that was asked but consulting companies mostly focus on case prep so and my so then i uh, like yeah so i, I then there was of course the summers process that happened so like there's bank day which is essentially like day 0 so to say sorry day minus 1 actually so bank day was day minus 1 here and then that is so i had a few fin shortlist but i so I just i like they'll call you and ask you so uh, whether you're interested in all so and there's this concept of like uh, like calling candidates in some order so they could the candidates they're more interested in their call order so i didn't sit for bank day and then of course consulting so i had a few consulting shortlist and i'll be in tony carney this summer so that was my experience i had two um, two interviews so i actually first had to bcg which didn't happen um then i went for carney and so there were two rounds so one was a case round and the second was they said my case had gone well so i just had like um questions like about my work ethics so uh, the, uh, and based on my resume so that was pretty much my summer placements process manashitosh yeah my experience was slightly different uh, finance uh, like trisha says works uh, slightly more differently it happens on what is called the day minus 1 uh for in fact like i'll just start with slightly more uh, let's take a step back uh you have your cv verification process which is very similar across iims uh they will take every single ounce of your uh, uh <laughs> will power to like get things verified all right uh, so you would have to if there's a word uh, that is like not verified they will make sure it is verified else like you cannot put it on your resume it's far more stringent than nst was uh i in fact got into like a bunch of uh, uh i had to deal with profs in insti who had you know, who had to like verify my point so that was also a lot of fun uh, but yeah once your cv verification is done uh life gets far more simpler uh, at least uh, bureaucracy wise uh, what happens is you have to decide on one uh, particular area that you'll uh, one one or two area that you want to like interview for because uh, i will again like add this uh, to people who are thinking of i am or not job scenes are far far more chill than in steever uh you if you want to in, intern in a sector i cannot tell about the company you will get to intern in a sector if you really want to do it uh, you, you might not get one company or that, this company or that company but say you want to do banking or say you want to do market say you want to do marketing say you want to do uh, consulting i mean you will get a job in that domain uh, the placement team is far more uh, uh, like it's just the number of jobs are way more over here uh, so placements run much more sm smoothly uh so you choose two areas because you will get a lot of shortlists uh, or you apply to nobody would suggest you apply to less number of companies uh, it, but you choose areas that look uh, these are the areas i'll uh, sit and i'll intern for once you choose areas shortlists start coming and your areas might change simply because you don't get a shortlist in a particular area altogether something very similar is happening to me uh, i was i thought that i'll go into trading because i came from a very you know trading market sort of background i thought i'll just go back to being a, a trading sort of a guy and i i started seeing that look for some reason i was not getting a lot of good trading shortlist i got a bunch of consult shortlist and banking surprisingly started shortlisting me uh, and again this goes back to what people say right like look uh, there are stereotypes uh, 
like everyone everyone told me every single person i spoke to told me dude uh, you're a engineer uh, you don't really have a chartered accountancy background bankers tend to be chartered accountant and that is true across iims uh, so yeah uh, i would say that don't stick that much with stereotypes there are always exceptions so yeah i chose uh, to focus on banking once my shortlist started coming so you i changed my sector i said i'll do banking and product management those will be my two areas that i'll focus on uh you have to prep uh fin calls happen uh, way more way before the actual placement day happens so placement day is actually sometime in december for us it was in december uh and my uh, call started somewhere around uh, early now early november uh, you would basically start getting calls from uh, people uh, who have shortlisted you and they would do an interview on the phone uh i i think this has not changed over the years with banking consulting tends to be more buddy calls still happen and you actually have interviews on the day zero right krishna uh yeah so uh, i think uh, uh, fin is much more it happens before like the day even see you so uh, i would uh, have the entire calls uh, by now uh, end of november and there is a whole concept of soft offer hard offer i'll not get into it but you get your uh, in fin you get your offer before uh, you actually sit for placement so on day 0 you just go ahead and like take your offer and walk out so a uh, fin was you have to do a lot of prep i would say you cannot it's almost impossible to do fin and consulting together i have only one friend who actually tried that and he gave up in the middle and on fin and he ran into consulting like he was like look simply because both of them are very demanding sectors like fin will re require you 40 hours of just video watching and uh, consulting you have to keep doing cases so again uh, it helps a lot uh, over here you have enough resources for fin as well like uh, your club the career club would tell you like look prepare from here these are the videos you have to watch these are the books you have to read and uh, you basically have to do all your seniors will help you out over here again very helpful environment that way and you can uh, depend on them and they'll sort of try to get you placed so yeah uh, i think f uh, it's a far more uh, before the december thing that actually happens so yeah uh uh just one or two more points like uh, so like ashutosh mentioned i completely forgot uh, so consulting your a lot i think it, a similar process happens for consulting sh um, shortlist and nst as well so there is a buddy allotted to you and you like you're supposed to interact with them and it's supposed to be non judgmental but of course they are like analyzing you and deciding whether to take you and all of that but any questions you have and all of that then there's consulting dinners as well so where you, where you interact with the partners and so uh, like so if you have a good make a good impression then so that will also help of course and sometimes you do cases with buddies so some firms ask that uh, for that um then i'd also so uh, i for backup i had um, like gen i was considering general management so if, like the like the learning point of view so as general management also so i think the top ones are tata administrative services and uh, abg's program leadership program or something don't quite remember uh, so for general management also that was mainly like say hr questions and uh, like your all of your work ex and all by general management and all of that uh, so that was main prep like that and there's market there's a like ashish mentioned there's marketing uh, as a domain as well so for marketing it was more like key by what kind of brands you like by which advertisements you like which is a good ad a bad ad um then so, and then there's some marketing concepts as well so there's this um, uh, marketing bible quote lore so of course just like browsing through that as well so there's preparation for marketing as well product management i hadn't really prepared for so i can't shed light on that probably ashutosh can yeah uh, for i can go ahead over with like so uh, for my uh, i had shortlist i did not apply to marketing area at all because i was very clear i did not want to work in marketing uh, i applied to a uh, few consults uh, four or five of them uh, i applied to everything in fin and i applied to uh, a few in uh, product management uh and had shortlist from everyone uh the fin prep is again very uh, uh you have to go through a bunch of videos by damodaran you have to go by uh, damodaran's book on uh, valuations and you have to actually create a stock sector pitch something again no, no class will teach you this you're supposed to pick this up uh, before uh, because the finance classes actually happen in your later terms uh, so you have to pick this up beforehand consulting like krishna was saying it's a very buddy based system uh some consult firms luckily in my case told me that look buddy calls will not be evaluated and they held their word as opposed to certain others who told me that buddy calls will not be evaluated but did not hold their word uh, so yeah uh, so luckily enough uh, 
uh, my consult prep was very i did two cases totally so i had given up on consult way too early on uh, but again i will still say that look uh, consult as if you do have structured thinking right and and this is where my ima thing came into play because i was doing cases throughout my classrooms uh, my structured thinking had developed by the time i actually sat for interviews so and i'm not sure how much i'll hold for i think if bangalore has strategy classes early on then even they'll have to like go through your classrooms are basically like a consult class where you know you have to do the whole nisi breakdown of your problem do the standard consult through a consult jargon and here and there uh, say verticalization five times in the middle and like there you have it you have the case solution uh, and i think uh, that helped a lot uh, my daily acads actually helped a bit in placements for consult uh, prodman again has its own books uh, there's the cracking the pm interview there's uh, prodman questions that you'll find online you'll have to talk to a few seniors who have been, uh, actually gone through pro uh, product management interviews and that su suffices generally uh, again i do not know much about prodman final interviews because i did not sit for them uh, i had a offer way too early on, uh, and i decided to drop out uh, yeah again uh, the even finance has like a bunch of splits you could go into private equity venture capital which focuses a lot on what is your understanding of businesses for example if you choose uh, a sector like it what how what drives revenues in it what is the business model of it companies how does a whole how, would you invest or not it's your money i'll give you a million dollars will you put your money there or not that is more of the value uh, pvc interviews banking uh, is more of look can you do modeling financial modeling really well do you have sound understanding of accounting and finance concepts uh and then there's trading which is much more of uh do you understand math really well can you keep up with current affairs do you have very strong opinion on the news or not so yeah i had a bunch of shortlist from all the three areas uh but yeah i ended up choosing uh, jp morgan for my internship my bd yeah okay thank you that was very informative about the process uh so that's the end of the questions from my side but we have a few more questions that we received from the students and i put them up here one by one yes uh so the first question is uh should one hunt for some work experience before applying to iim so should we go for it directly after btech so the students are concerned about uh, whether they should be appearing for cat right after you know graduation or should they be pursuing some work experience before moving into mbas <laughs> maybe this can can start in a situation yeah uh, so i think work experience will certainly help so you get some understanding of how business works how the corporate world works and all of that so i then i think work experience will certainly help better your mba experience any kind of learning that you have or uh, that being said i think i am amdabad has the option of deferment for 2 years i think and isb has a vlp program which is also for last year of college so if you can go for a deferred program and uh, like universities abroad also have those if they are considering harvard as 2 plus 2 i think yale also has something and all of that so any of these deferred options if they can crack that in the final year that will certainly be good but i think having some work experience before doing an mba is certainly the uh, best option uh yeah so there are two things to it right one is do you want a better job do you want a better learning experience out of an mba what are you looking for uh both cases i think uh, having a little amount of work ex helps i would say the sweet spot is around 2 to 3 years uh if you are planning an indian mba and obviously for a foreign visa it's 4 uh, to 5 years uh i would still say that look uh, and this came uh, somewhere in my term 2 which is like the middle of my first year uh what i realized was like some classes you will not be able to relate to if you do not have work experience i could clearly draw parallels to my work for example human resource management right you will not understand when someone says look hr is important because this because your view of hr as an undergrad in nst is very very different uh, from what an hr does once you're in an organization so uh, yeah i would say that work ex certainly helps uh, even strategy for example if you have run a product before right and a corollary to this is if you have actually run a company before i mean that is the best work experience you can get but in the lieu of that you should aim for some work experience in for at least 2 years and that helps you add to the classroom discussion as well uh, like i said at the end of the day it's a there will be no one who will be teaching you to add better to the classroom it makes more sense that you know you bring real life points so uh, i i do think that 
WorkX definitely does help. Even job scene, uh, having WorkX on your resume is generally seen as like something which is good, either in consulting or finance. So I would definitely say as an engineer, you should go ahead and get some fin experience. Uh, but yeah, uh, even in consulting or uh, general management or PM, it helps. Definitely helps. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, I think I'll also I'll I'll I'm really sorry for cutting you off, Malika. Uh, I would just add uh, uh, this thing. If you do get into like uh, say I am B or I am C, uh, like you know, at uh, out of instinct, think about it. It's not that. If you do not have work experience, you know, all is lost. Some of the smartest people I know right now are like two years junior to me and have just joined out of uh, college. So you could think about it. Look at what you want out of an MBA. I mean, that is always the driving factor in your decision. So just think about it. Like Trishna said, if you get a deferred admit, that's hands on the best thing you can have. So Ahmedabad offers one. You have Yale Silver Scholars. You have HBS 2 plus 2. Stanford has a 2 plus 2. I mean, apply to all these places out of Instinct. If you get in, that's just straight up amazing. Thank you. Uh, and so the second question is in continuation with the first one. So how feasible it is for a fresher to get into IM, A, B, or C without any work experience? So what is the rate of intake of fresh graduates, uh, if you could shed some light on that? I can talk about A quickly. Uh, a has a lot of freshers. Uh, uh, I think around. 40-45% percent of my batch is currently fresh. Uh, so definitely doable. Uh, and in fact, there's a bunch of them who are, you know, who have deferred their admits as well. So A at least I can guarantee you is 100% percent doable. If you really want to go to IMA, I think you can get in. Uh, C also tends to, I believe, and I don't think we have anyone from C, but I can speak that C does take freshers. I know a bunch of friends who out of 2018 batch uh, directly went into and Calcutta and were able to do things. B, I think, uh, gives some point, extra points to WorkX, but Trishna can talk more about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the proportion of freshers is lesser at B. Like, so B tends to have people, more people with work experience. But I think this A and C also have points for work, WorkX, probably less weightage or something. So, but yeah, the proportion here is a lot lesser compared to A and C. But it's certainly doable. It's uh, like, it's not impossible. There are a lot of freshers here. Uh, so that is certainly doable. Thank you. And uh, also, as uh, engineering students, are there some specific aspects that we need to keep in mind while appearing for interviews, or uh, any specific areas that we need to uh, we need to place much emphasis on? Oh, I'd say the why you're switching fields, bit. So of course, the Indian, even Indian standard degree is B Tech plus MBA, but uh, so especially like uh, moving from a technical field to something like an MBA, is, because you mentioned interviews specifically, I'll only talk about those. So I think these questions, like some of these HR questions about why you're moving and why um, why you're making the switch and all of that. So I mean, if engineering is something that you decided, like of course you were quite young, but still it was a decision of yours. So you have to be able to defend this decision that okay, I'm leaving engineering, I'm moving to an MBA. So I have thought this out well. I have thought this through. So just being, I think that is one major aspect you need to focus on. Pashutosh has anything? Nothing much more to add. I think yeah, just be very clear on why you're switching away from engineering. And that switching reason should not be more money, uh, I, or or something like look, I'll get a better job or something like that. Do not have something like that in your mind. Uh, have a very clear, concise reason. I mean, even if it is more money, like frame it really well. I there are there is something else that you're looking for that is there in that more money. You just need to dig deeper and like look into it. So yeah, uh, makes. I think yeah. One more thing is just go over your. Uh, four years of notes once again like at the very least if they ask you what the three laws of thermodynamics are i mean do not be like hey, i do not know what the three laws of thermodynamics are and i'm a mechanical engineer i don't think that should be the case uh, and i took this example because a friend did that he did not know what the th <laughs> three laws were and yeah that wasn't a very good experience for him. so yeah just just go over like at least have rough idea of your engineering as well Sure, thank you. And the uh, next question is, uh, how much does your CGPA in college affect your chances of getting into IIM? So does it have any much relevance or is it, uh, if someone is having a low CGPA, is there some other ways in which we can make up for it? Uh, 
I can take this one. So, uh, your it does get into your calls and your final admin uh, decision. I will not lie about it. Uh, and the way it gets us, there are slabs again, like uh, like I was saying earlier. So if you have what is a nine pointer in Insti or above, you get ten points out of ten points. If you have somewhere between, I think, uh, uh, I think between uh, uh, eight and nine, you will get uh, two points lesser. Seven and eight, two points lesser. It goes on like that. That being said, uh, if if you have a lower CGPI, aim for a higher CAT percentile. You'll have to make up for the points somewhere. So aim for a higher CAT percentile or, I mean, like I said, get some work X if you really believe that you can't uh, crack it this year. But nevertheless, write the exam. Who is like stopping you from writing the exam? Write the exam. Uh, get some work X if possible. There are, obviously, in the case, I've seen people with uh, seven pointers also come in. Uh, but I would definitely suggest somehow, like, if, if you still have time, try to get it above eight at the very least. Uh, it helps and definitely does not hurt anywhere. Okay, thank you. Uh, and also the POs that uh, we take up in uh, INSTI, do they have any relevance when it comes to the selection procedures or during interviews or uh, any of the procedures? Uh, I I have nothing to add here. I, I took almost zero POs in INSTI. So Trisha can probably add. Um, so they only help as a talking point during an interview. So there is no weightage for any of any PORs or any kind of work that you've done. It might have during your summers as well, but the selection procedure there's no weightage for peer PORs. Yeah, and okay. people who have not done PORs and do not worry, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> so either way, I think it's like she said, a talking point. And so it's something that you can talk about in your interviews. Doesn't have a direct impact on your scores at least in getting calls or converting okay thank you and another question is uh, how do i figure out if i really want to do an mba so i'm torn between whether i should uh, go on with the job and continue along the way or uh, if uh, i should go on have an mba and then build my career along those lines so this is a question from another student would you like to address this please maybe this i can start um, so I'd say it's a very personal decision, so to say, like what, like Ashtosh slightly mentioned earlier, what, depends on what you're looking for from your MBA. So say if you're looking for the learning or if you're looking for a career switch. So like um, say a lot of say software engineers come in and they move into say product management or cons even consulting and all of that. So the MBA will help with that career switch. It will help with your learning. It will certainly help you get more money. So it just depends on what you are looking for, like where you want to go in your career and what you are looking for from an MBA. Yeah, again, uh, if you have that question, <laughs> I would say don't. But uh, uh, in all seriousness, you could, uh, you'll have to think about like what what are you looking for uh, out of a job. L like both of us earlier said, this is again some other place where, you know, working actually helps for some time. If you're working for some time, either by the end of two years, you'll be clear that, look, I need an, I just need to get out of this job and like get an MBA. Or you'll be like, look, uh, the job is pretty good. I should just continue and do something deeper in this field. Uh, either ways, I mean, try things out if you're not very clear. But uh, it's generally good to uh, err on the side of caution. And, you know, like I said, an MBA will definitely not hurt you in the long run. If nothing, uh, think of it like a two year vacation. If nothing, that's the worst case scenario that you can like think of an MBA as. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have had a good number of questions from the students as well. And uh, so uh, thank you, Trishna and Ashutosh. The session was very informative and I'm very sure that the students have some, gained some really good insights about how to keep, start their preparation for the MBA dreams. Uh, so before we conclude the session, do you have something specific to say about all the MBA aspirants out there in industry? So something that we did not raise, but you feel could be helpful to the students that you learned um, uh, at a later stage in the process. Maybe Ashutosh can start. Uh, I would say that, look, it's OK even if uh, things do not work out the way you're planning them to be. Uh, I mean, INSTI is a very good playground, per se, for trying out different things. Like I said, I mean, I started out in research. I was thinking of becoming an academic out of INSTI. 
uh, moved into a finance job randomly moved into an mba and i'm still not very clear on what i should do till date uh, but i think the take life with a little bit bit of pinch of salt and uh, i mean again as an mba aspirant i would just say uh, think of think of whether you really want to do what you're jumping into like uh, if you really like business and you want to explore business as a whole uh, and when i say business don't just think you know hey i'm good at managing people should i go and do an mba no business is a lot more than that it's one part of business obviously but there's a lot more to business than that so do your research well if you're like trying to figure out what you want to do and in general like just don't uh, and it's okay if you don't understand what is going on around you as well in final year most of us did not and and i think all of us are doing well uh yeah i mean the thing is pretty much spot on it's it's okay to be clueless and so like just adding on to that throughout if you are actually deciding to do if you have already decided to do an mba just that um like to so just do, just take calm through the process i i think i it got uh, like balancing it with my work ex because i was in consulting i had, had to travel as well so i just had the weekends and all of that so just got managing it became a bit hectic there was a period where i got very stressed that i wasn't able, like i'm not able to do it but so just keep your calm it will like you made it through iit i mean plus iit is a very good um it helps develop your personality and all of that so you certainly very uh, like in a very good place compared to the other aspirants and uh, so then once and like you once you get into an mba it's then you realize that like you see all of these people like if i have a, there's this one of my batchmates is an international chess player but i mean, so there's a lot of people who uh, so i think one thing that uh, has happened to me here is i've stopped comparing myself to people in that sense there are a lot of brilliant people from varied fields i think i am at the but there's a miss india finalist and all of that so there are a lot of these brilliant people who have done incredible stuff but they still just like you you just realize that okay they think that your thought process is very similar there are areas where you are actually so, so to say better but so uh, so then just like getting exposure to all of this is certainly good and you learn how to stop comparing yourself to people so this was just after i joined mba so yeah pretty much it thank you guys the session has been very informative and uh, it was a very beautiful fun day session to me as well uh, and thank you uh, ashish roshan krishna it was a pleasure hosting you both and thank you everyone for attending the session and spending the evening with us please do let us know of your feedback for the session and we are very much looking forward to catching up with everyone in yet another session in the mba story series thank you thank you for hosting us malvika Thank you. Thank you.